Okay, so now we come over to the spray bay. We've got everything cleaned away. We've checked all the panel lines. Everything else looks fine, as we said before. Pre-shading's all done, gone on the tree. Now, one little thing. Obviously, the call-outs for Russian paint, sometimes in acrylic especially, they're quite hard to find the right ones. For this underside one, my colour of choice would have been something like the uh, Valero 047, which is a blue, grey, greenish, um, very similar to the, Rush, uh, sorry, the German underside colours during World War II. Thing is, I'm actually out of that one. So instead of me waiting forever for it to come through, or just getting in the other paints, I thought I'd make my own up. Now it's something I don't normally do that much, but when you're dealing with heavy weathering like we're going to be doing on this one, you can get away with it. Purely because what's going to happen is we're going to weather it, we're going to fade it, we're going to lighten it, we're going to darken it. We're going to darken it obviously with the pre-shading and the post-shading. We're going to fade it up at obviously the middle of the panels and things like that by adding white to the paint. So in some ways, the color itself isn't that important. And especially if you look at um, very heavy weathered and sun bleached uh, aircraft, especially Russian stuff um, that's been kicking around a while, obviously if you used to come up with a color swatch for it and put it next to it, it'd be nothing like the color whatsoever. So you don't have to be exactly spot on. Obviously it does help if you've got the original color because you can just lighten it and that will give you the color. And obviously you don't want it to be a million miles away otherwise it's gonna look silly. But for certainly something like this, I can get away with it. So what I've actually done, um, I've come up with a little formula for you. What we've done, we've taken 20% of the um, XF23, uh, which is the light blue, which you may remember we did the wheel wells um, with that. Um, so that one's we had already. 20% of X19, now this gives it that gray color to the blue, but obviously we're gonna be far, far too strong still at that point. So then what we actually did was come along with lots of white and 60% white added to that all goes together to make this. Now what I tend to do, another little trick is, when I'm testing obviously the colour, you might see down here, I've done it on here, uh, I did it on a little bit of plastic uh, plastic card to get the colours right so I was going through. I sprayed the cup, the top of it with it, this is a, obviously an XF2 bottle that I've used, and obviously we spray it just like that and it gives us our colour, so we've got a colour swatch and obviously if you've got it kicking around, things like that, because it's got a funny colour top on it, it's a lot to do. So if I show you the colour that we've actually come up with, we've actually come up with this colour, which I think is a pretty good base for us to start on. As I say, because we're going to be weathering it and darkening it and lightening it, it doesn't have to be spot on. Okay, Tamiya acrylics, obviously one of the finest acrylics of paint around, I must say. So we'll just move uh, this little guy, just making sure it's not a part we're going to need uh, out of the way. <coughs> Okay, spraying air pressure. Obviously this is going to be quite a, a thick coat of paint going to be going on here on all the undersides. So I'm going to be shooting round about, turn it up just a little bit, about 25 psi, which I know seems quite high. Okay, thinner's going in first. Okay, and as a starting point we're going to do a 50-50 mix into here. Just goes in. <clears throat> I'm going to give this a good old mix. Now, we're going over pre-shading, and you might notice I haven't done the wheel wells and covered them up yet. I'm going to try and be clever and spray around it. There again, because it's going to be a grimy, dirty sort of situation, um, I'm not going to worry about it too much, because it would be dirty and bleached out with the rest of the aircraft at the same time. If I just put some covers on things in case I elbow them over, which wouldn't be the first time. So we just move those out of the way. Okay, got quite a full colour cut, so make sure you clean off anything that's gone around the outside. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to be a little bit careful here. Checking our flow, nice and smooth paint flow coming out. We're gonna start on the wing, and obviously we're just gonna be doing the top sides. Check your references to see how far down the sides of the actual aircraft it goes. But for the moment, I'm gonna carry on with the center area and the wings, and then I'll make my way around to other areas. So there we go, we're just going on. Now, if you notice like this is, it's a little bit speckly. What that is, the paint is too thick. Chances are it's where I've been making this up. Uh, I'm mixing colours, it's going a little bit thicker. So what I'm going to do is tip about half of this back into the colour pot. He says, making a bit of a mess there. Okay, cleaning up the side of the, the cup. One thing to remember, when you're dealing with cloths all around, just avoid the needle end, because that's where needles get bent. You come along, you pull them around, and you end up pulling the needle. Okay, more thinners going in. So we're going to add another good mill into this 5 mil colour cup we've got at the top back in again. As I said, because we've got pre-shading on here, the thinner your paint, the better the pre-shading will show through. So if it is looking speckly, feel free to get that out of the way. Okay, blast this through again. 
to get rid of obviously everything that's sat in the main chamber. And as you can see, the airbrush has stopped. So what we've got here is a blockage going on. I'm gonna pump the trigger and get that out. And it feels quite smooth. So I'm gonna come back and that's better. Quite a smooth one going on there. If you have got any speckling going on still, what that is is part of the paint hasn't dissolved um, with the thinners. Sometimes you can get away with it, sometimes you can't. On the side, you can usually get away with it because it will melt in as other paint goes on. But as you can see here, what we're going to do is just putting down a light coat first, just like that, on this wing, and then we're going to leave it and go elsewhere. Just like so, working down the spine. Go over to this other wing. Just around like that. Okay, we've got one coat on there for the moment. We're just going to flip the extract box, get a bit smoky in here. That'll draw all that out. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to lightly roll this over a little bit. Okay, and we're just going to go around and do the sides. Remember, don't kill this pre-shading off. You still need it to show through. Okay, so as soon as it starts to disappear, come away, go elsewhere. And what will happen is, as soon as it dries, it will start to pull back. But we want this one, as we said before, to be a very nice heavy weathered type of offering. So there we go. We're just gonna put a bit on there. Okay, we've gone through our first color. So we're doing cut into air now. Just drying this off so it's handleable so we can get hold of this and turn it around without the risk of putting in a horrible sticky print. Just like so. Okay, I'm going to carry on with the other side, spray that up as well. And at the same time, I'm going to do all the doors um, and obviously weapons pylons and everything else that's got to be this colour as well. Okay, so this one's been drying now for about sort of half an hour. And this is say, it's pretty rough as you can hear, but that's going to add to the weathering and give us some great weathering effects we can do. So you can see, we can see the pre-shading showing through very nicely, quite happy with how that's gone on. So now we get on with the top side. Now obviously with the camo work, um, various different ways of doing this, if you're going to be doing like we're going to do here, where it's going to be very, very weathered, you're better off doing it freehand, no matter how bad your sort of freehand is. The reason for that is it gives a better worn feathered look. If you're going to come along and start masking it, it's going to be quite hard edged. And obviously when you look at um, photos of particularly worn down aircraft, things like that, it fades, there's touch ups, it fades some more, different levels of sort of fading on the aircraft and things like that. I've already had a play already, and we've done the tail planes as you can see here. Um, as you can see, you probably see the pre shadings showing through very, very nicely. And if we just bring in the close up here, um, as you can see, it's there showing through and that's what we want. Now this sand color is a lot lighter than actually the color that really should be on the aircraft. But then again, what we're doing, we're trying to give it that worn look so it would lighten and bleach and wouldn't be quite as sandy as perhaps the others. But as you can see, the pre-shading showing through very nicely on those. So what we can do now, just clear those out of the way a second, we can show you what we're going to do. So what we're going to do, we're going to come along, and for this one I'm going to be using the Guns um, Sanya range. This is their acrylic, um, this is number 310. As I say, this one really is designed for Israeli aircraft, US aircraft, and not particularly Russian, but that's what we're saying about This one's going to be, wants it to be a faded effect, and this helps us out because we can go in with this neat, and then we can then thin it slightly, put some more white to it, and do some bleaching type of work with it. So we're going to give it a good old shake. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're just going to check our airbrush make sure it's had a good clean so we just blow through some other stuff through there get rid of all of that that's all done nice okay so then what we're going to do we're going to take about a one mil of thinners into the color cut okay and we're going to take about one mil paint 
goes in. Now a little tip you can do here, if you put your pipette in and suck it up and blow it down and suck it up and blow it down gently, don't overdo this, otherwise you're going to end up wearing it. Okay, it mixes the paint very nicely for you. Okay, so we just pop that down there. Now don't worry about having your pipette fill up with paint because in a minute I'll show you how to clean that out whilst cleaning your airbrush at the same time. Okay, so we just put them out of the way. Okay, and we're just going to pop the tops on. Okay, now this is quite a wet mix, so we just check our flow and see it's coming out, you know, pretty wet. So what we've done, we've turned our air pressure down now to about 20 psi, so it's probably around about 18 psi of working air pressure, which is a lot lower than I normally spray. Normally I spray about sort of 25, but what we don't want to do is cover this pre-shading up and lose it straight away. We want it to actually work for us. So by doing this quite thin paint, low air pressure, it's going to take a lot of work to cover this paint. Now this is absolutely rough as hell. It is very rough. We're talking sandpaper roughness. That's going to work for us because it's going to grip the paint and hold it on then afterwards when we give it a couple of coats of um, clear gloss it will smoothen it back up and everything and if we need to we can pop around with a sanding sponge and clean it up a little bit as well but it, it will all help to the thing now we've been doing all camo work always start with the lightest color first so obviously for this purpose we started with the gray on the underside moving up with the brown and then we're going to come back with the green for the last one the reason for doing it that way is obviously coverage it will cover a lot lot better so check our flow again, we're quite happy. What we're gonna do, we're gonna got our instructions. Okay, we're gonna just put them over here. We're gonna orientate them the same direction as the model is in as well, so it gives us a nice easy one to follow. Okay, we're gonna start down here on this wing. So what we're gonna do, you can roughly trace this if you wanted to with a pencil. Now don't use a killer pencil that's gonna scrape completely, but what you can do, you can roughly work out where this is gonna go and just put in a nice faint line. Okay, and then we do the same down here. Okay, that's gonna come up, it's gonna come over the top of this flat. Gonna roughly track around the inside of it. Okay, so it's slightly come up here and then down and out. And it sweeps a little bit. Now as you see, we've got the flaps uh, put in there and everything else like that. And we're going to do the same for the leading edges, but we're going to spray them separately afterwards and I'll show you about that. So what we do, we get this on. Okay, so we're just going to start on the end of this wing and work our way through. So you see it, very, very light. And what we're going to do is just mist this on for the minute and get this working. So we're not worried too much, just don't let it get too wet. If it suddenly gets wet looking, pull away. Cut to air, and all we're doing now triggers all the way forward and is just drying this off. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to immediately scoot off and do somewhere else. Don't worry about it if you go over onto the green area too much because we'll take care of that afterwards. Okay, but hopefully you can see, and if we do the close up cam in a little bit more. Okay, that's it. So we just build this up, and because it's taking a while to build up, it will keep us our pre shading showing through. So we're just going to let this dry off, cut into air, dry it down. And as you can probably see as well, especially if you look on the close-up, um, this actual, um, which is part of the speed brake system that's actually going to come up, uh, that uh, it's obviously a lot darker. That's because it's got no pre-shading on it, and the underside is lighter. So it's going to be showing up as a lighter colour, but we're going to work for us because obviously we're going to make it look like it's had a touch-up in real life, and it's going to look like a new path. So what we're going to do, we're just going to work our way over this wing now. And obviously the more paint you get down, the wetter you can make it and get away with it, okay? But as soon as it's looking really wet, cut away, cut to air, and dry back. Now the close-up cam will probably show this as being a stronger um, free shading than it really is. That's just purely because... Um, if we just turn up the air pressure a little bit just to do some filling work. That's just because of the way the camera picks up the detail. Okay, so we're just going to pop around here. Air pressure is just lifting a little bit higher than what I was after. 
okay looking quite wet coming back dry it down I say normally what I would do is I'll go up and do a different area so I'd scoot off and do a wing or something like that so okay what I'm going to do is just roughly freehand whip across this top section okay so it's going to come up here okay it's going to run it's going to center up the body and say that as soon as you look wet just go somewhere else leave it totally behind and just overlap slightly the lines where you've put down for doing the other paintwork but just take your time of building up paintwork don't go there to sort of flooding an area and think you're going to paint it in one it's going to take a lot more than that so what we we'll do is we we'll just dry off this wing okay so this wing is basically what I'm going to do now to the rest of the aircraft but it will enable me to sort of scoot off and get on with this a little bit more and I'll show you about doing the sides and other little tricky areas so I'll just get on with putting on this tan for the moment okay so that's the main part of the actual painting done so what we've got to do we've got to do these leading edges um, so that's pretty straightforward so what we're going to do is we'll face this one towards us okay now you could do this afterwards or you can do it now just get a drop more paint Okay, but what we're going to do, we're basically going to come along, marry these up. Now I'm doing this a bit back to front so you guys can see. So we know it's going to go there and to the end. So we're just going to spray this entire one. So we just cut to air. It's not so bad on these, uh, but when we come for the next one, obviously it's got to line up uh, a lot better. So I'll do the same for the other side. So this one, there's a couple of points. You can guess where it was. Okay, so we're just gonna, if we just hold it where it, there is none going to be. So it's gonna come in and it's gonna go to here. Okay, and then all the way down. Like so, and we'll put this other end as well. Okay, stick them off to one side. Right, okay, some little pointers to show you how I did a few things. Obviously, we've got, um, you might be able to see this edge here. So obviously what I did, I shot from this side going across. So this is, if you like, in the shadow area down here. So all the overspray just goes straight past it. That way you don't have to mask it up, but it does give you a tiny little feathered edge, and that's what we wanted. Same along here at the front. Down here, we just cut that in, which I'll show you about that in a moment. Now, I'm quite happy how that's all showing through. We've got quite a lot of the pre-shading showing through. But what I want to do now is obviously add a tiny little bit of sun bleaching to this to give it even more of a weathered look. Now, obviously I'm using Guns paint, so I'm going to stick with using Guns um, paints, whites, um, for doing it. And sometimes I mix them. I don't use anybody's type of acrylic. But with using the Guns range, um, I do tend to find that they don't like going with other people's and things like that. So what we're going to do, we're just going to open up this one okay that we've got very very little in here so we're going to add a lot more thinners to the mix okay and then we're just going to come along and we're just going to take one in fact this is really well separated down here at the bottom so we just need to have to get this going a bit okay so we're just going to take one drop of white into this mix and immediately you'll see it will stain up the, the colour cup. Okay, and it will make it a very, very lighter colour. You might be able to see that one, just like that. Okay, so this is definitely more of a buff colour than a, a brown now. Okay, to me that's just a little bit too, too light, so I'm going to add a tiny bit of brown to that. Okay, same thing, I'm going to pull up, suck up and down a few times, just to mix that up nicely. Okay, check our colour, pop that back, okay, check our flow, flow work through, make sure there's no heavy duty spitting, which I've got a little bit going on there, let me see what a bit, there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do, pop out middles of panels. I'm just going to put in some little faint areas just into the middle of panels so it gives it a more broken down look 
you can pick out some whole areas if you wanted to but we're just trying to give this a sort of bleach faded look okay but just keep it quite random just do little swizzle patterns obviously when you can't get in to anywhere perfectly and it will just give it an overall sort of bleached effect and then certain areas you can pick out and think okay we'll give that a bit more than normal and it might make it look like a different panel or something else like that but as you can probably see here on the other cam um, it gives us a nice overall effect and then just pick out the odd little thing to give it a bit more perhaps of a bleaching job than the rest has had okay but certainly big panels tend to bleach up so just think about that as you're going around okay and then obviously things that are on top do tend to get a bit more bleached than things on the sides and there we go so say on the, the other cam here you can see that coming through quite heavily uh, but it's just adding to the weathering effect but what it does it stops them looking like a brick of colour Okay, so we're just popping around. As I say, there's no order to this. Keep it quite random. Okay, as you go around, it's just things. If you've got something that's big and flat, give it quite a bit. Okay, big panels. If you get panels, give them quite a bit. Okay. But we're going to do the same with the green as well. So it just gives us that sort of faded in. You know what's happened here very very faded look and obviously if you get an area which you know is a walkway give it plenty on there as well but once you've finished it just like this what i'm going to do now is just gently overspray the entire thing just to uniform it in a little bit okay just like this i've just got a very fine amount coming out here and that'll just knock it all back hopefully a little bit as you can see so we do the same onto the horizontal tail as well Plenty on the flat. And then it'll just break it all up. And there we go. So I'm really happy how that one's come out. As I say, on the other camera, you can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to do the same on these ones as well. Once so we've got it going here, here. And then what we'll do, we're going to come along and we're going to do the same with the green, but a little bit more careful. Okay, so you might remember me saying about, obviously this one's covered in paint up in here. What you can do, you can suck out all the colour you don't want, put it back into your colour cup. It doesn't matter, even if it's got a little, little bit of light on it. Okay, come along with your airbrush cleaner. Okay, pop it in here. Okay, and then give it a good suck up and down and run it around the inside. Okay, all the areas like that. And then you might want to do, get your soft cleaning brush like this. Give it a rub around, get rid of all the horribles and nasties now a big problem you get sometimes you get some of this stuff on the side if you come along and just blow this through all the horrible bits go down in so what you do it's what we're saying with this come along with your pipette suck all this horrible stuff up okay get an old pot or something you're using okay and we're just gonna squish that all out in there so we just come back another quick go okay and we'll blow through just to clean out the airbrush as normal okay just going to pick up a bit of the horribles now onto it in here blow it out and as you can see you clean out your pipette at the same time so there we go once we pump all this out there we go let your pipettes clear and ready for going again so that's a good way and a quick little sneaky trick of how to clear out your airbrush nicely so now what we can do i'm just going to change colors load up with the green and we're going to get on and get some more green paint onto this one to complete the camera okay so we've already spoken about um you know how to get the best sort of weathered paint looking and it is really has to be freehand now i know a lot of people are terrified when you mention freehand it's one of those things that comes with practice the more you practice the better and more proficient you get at it not from a point of view of being good at it but you know when to stop almost you know when the paint's going to start to flood and going to give bad effects now as i've spoken about a lot and obviously it's in a lot of my um more tutorial dvds and things like that 
and uh, videos is that I spray dry and you might have noticed as I've been doing this one already and to get a nice camo works the same way I don't want it to look wet if it's going to look wet I'm going to start to push it you're going to get spidery legs and everything else like that's going to start to happen and that's something we don't want we want the paint to go on we want it to stick obviously we've got it primed first which is always a bonus but the other thing as well is that you just need to get the paint mixture just right for your airbrush it's one of those variables we're talking about here this one here has got a 0.2 millimeter needle set in it, which isn't anything too fancy. Um, it's, it's quite a, a fine needle, obviously, by the standards of some of them, but some of them I can go down even finer to 0.15. And you would think the smaller your needle size, the better and the tighter the camo is. That is true to a certain extent, but also you need to worry about what the paint pressure is going through there and certainly, you know, how much paint to thinners, how much paint to air. It's a balancing act between all three of thinners, paint and air. Once you've got them all correct you can get in nice and close and the closer you are the tighter your camo is going to be. It doesn't matter if you've got a 0.4 needle in or a 0.1.5. The closer you can get the less spray you'll have the tighter the line will be. But it's one of those things where you just have to play for a couple of weeks at least of just getting it in there and going so-so and getting it nice and tight and a good thing you can practice on is a piece of plastic art just come along spray down it and just practice how tight you can get into your paint flow and that's really the secret to it is a lot of people say well it's all right for you you just come along and slam it down it's one of those things you put the time in put the hours into it you'll come away and get quite good at it and it's a bit like sort of you know driving a manual car and doing heel starts on the clutch so you're using a little bit of throttle a little bit of clutch coming away and finding the balancing act between all three and that's just the same with airbrushing so what we're going to do we're going to start with the green so first thing is first we're going to go thinners in one mil of thinners to just under one mil of paint okay we've probably got about just over half a mil of paint same thing we're going to squirt it up and down just to make sure it's working in here Okay, let it flow down the old airbrush and then we can get it out. Okay, we just move these out of the way. Bring this one in. Same thing again, make sure you've got your instructions to hand and then that way you can see where you're going with all your paintwork and stuff like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to do slightly different this time. We're going to start on this wing over here and we're going to work our way across. Okay, so what we do, we bring the camera in nice and close so you can see what I'm up to on the close-up. Okay, so making sure that the flat part of it is hanging just so so because we don't want it interfering with the rest. Check our paint flow, blow it through a little bit, pump the trigger all the way back so you know you're clear and you're not going to get any blockages coming through. Air pressure is 20 psi, as I said, it's a 50 50 mix with thinners. Um, to paint and then just a little bit more thinners. That's the easiest way to go and that's a start line for it. And you can just, when you come down and put it on the model, you can see how it's going to start with. Okay, so if you put it on and it looks quite wet, then you can think, right, okay, we're gonna have to pull away a little bit. I'm not gonna go for the tight areas. We're gonna do big areas in the middle and see how we go. Or you can just pull away, add a little bit more paint to it, mix it through and then blow it through. But I'm quite happy how this one's going at the moment. So hardly pulling the trigger back at all. We're just going to come along and we're just going to touch this little guy in down here. Now remember, we don't want to lose all that nice free shading. So we don't want to flood it too much. Okay, then we're just going to move down to this next one. So we're just having a look to see where everything is. So that's that one there. So we're just going to come. Okay, and we're going to start... In there like that and I'm happy how it's spraying now if I wasn't happy obviously I'd come away play with the airbrush change the settings a little bit perhaps if it's you know if it's starting to spit I'd actually raise the air pressure just a touch give it a whirl okay if that wasn't working then I'll thin the paint a little bit if it's really watery okay I probably wouldn't necessarily turn the air pressure down but I'd certainly add more paint to it because I'm about the right distance from here I'm probably about a quarter of an inch away um, from the actual model itself which is I think is a nice distance if I wanted it to be a really sharp camo obviously I'd thin the paintwork even more turn the air pressure even more down and the more they go thinner and less air the closer I have to be to the point where I'm almost on top of it and put in a perfect line we don't want that we move away so we want it to be a nice sort of faded in edge without being too much over the top so what we're going to do now we're just going to carry on 
So we're just going to come on with this one now. Okay. Also, the thing to remember, the soon as you pick up spitting, come off. You know, there's no point hanging around if you've got spitting. There's trouble. You need to get it sorted. So it's probably best to move away. So, okay, we're just going to do a little bit of back filling in here. Okay, we're coming in 45 degrees from the line where we've put it in. So obviously we don't get any overspray around. Okay, so we're just coming in. And just taking our time and building up the colour. We're not trying to come in here and just layer a load of colour in. It is going to take a little bit of time. So what we'll do, we'll just come on up here. And we're going to do a little bit of back filling in here. When a little bit wet, so I'm just going to cut to air. Just needle all the way the trigger forward. Just air coming out now. Okay, and we're just going to pull it back. Okay, same thing. Okay, now it's got a little bit of a faded edge on this one, a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn it round and I'm going to come in from this side. And we're just going to cover over that area. And we're just going to pull this little guy back a fraction just to show in here. I'm just going to back paint in here. Looking wet, just drying down. And then, just like so. Okay, we're going to do this one down here as well. So we're just going to come in, go on the other side, roughly put in where we're going to go. Okay, now we do have to worry about this down here, down this side. Um, obviously, you can't see it too well on there, but what we don't want to do is obviously get paintwork down this inside. So, what we're going to do, we're going to turn it away from us. Okay, and shoot it that way so we don't get any in down on this side. Okay, so we're just going to come in. Okay, we're going to make sure this isn't too high up. Where it's supposed to be. Just in the back fill. the major work okay just like that and then what we do we're just going to tidy up in here as we see it okay then what we do we're just going to add a few little details into this one so what I mean my details is we move in nice and close pump our trigger just to lose anything nasties and then all we're going to do is come in at this angle Okay, and we're just going to give it a few little lumps and bumps. Okay, we're just going to come over here. And we're just going to roughly work this one down. Okay, a little bit of back filling. Just in. Okay, so we're going to roughly put our power in here. Quite a lot of trigger pullback now. Okay, drying about off because it's looking rather wet. So you might be able to see it drying off as well. Okay, and then all we're going to do, same again, nice and nice and close. Hardly any pullback and trigger, but we're just doing a tiny little line. Just to sharpen all that up. Okay, in, back filling it now. Just coming to the inside of the line. So we put in. And there we 
go. That gives us something like that. Then what I'm going to do now, is obviously I'll carry on with the rest of it, but that's the basics of actually doing that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a photo of this as well right now and then show you this um, so you can see it in a lot more detail. So there you go, that shows it in a lot more detail, and as you can see, it's a nice edge there. You've still got a tiny bit going over, but as soon as you're like, you know, four or five inches away, you can't see it. It's only when you're really that close up to it. So as I say, that's the basics of it. Just take your time, just pull away in its tiny amount of paint and let it build up, and away you go. And you can get quite artistic. So you put down the major colour, get it down on there, and then you can get in nice and close and just put the lumps and little bumps and all the little details you want to in there, and you can make your way around the model completely. Same thing again, but what we're going to do, I'll get this all finished and we'll come back and do some weathering to that.